Hello everyone, it's Miss Rivetera, and today I thought I would read The Moccasin Goalie by William Roy Brownridge. The Moccasin Goalie. <clears throat> a long time ago, when I was a boy, my family lived on the prairies in a small town called Willow. The winters there were very cold, with the wind blowing the deep snow into huge drifts. My friends and I didn't mind. This was our favorite time of year. Cold temperatures meant ice, and ice meant hockey. I had four best friends. We lived for hockey. Anita had long braids that flew out behind her when she skated. Marcel was big and quiet and good at sports. Then there was the tough little guy we named Pitu. And finally, there was my dog, Bingo, who always tried to steal the puck. I was the goalie. I had a crippled foot, sorry, crippled leg and foot, so I couldn't wear skates. But my leather moccasins were just fine. I was quick and could slide across the goal mouth really fast. They called me Moccasin Danny. Before the really cold weather brought ice to our rink, we played road hockey right on Main Street in front of the red and white store. Pieces of firewood or old overshoes marked our goals. We didn't have street lights, and sometimes after dark, we'd play by the light spilling from the store windows. Often on stormy days, Mom let us play inside with a soft ball of sponge rubber. As time went by, we became more and more impatient for the day when we could play real hockey. <clears throat> when winter finally arrived, the rink was the center of attention. The men and big boys began the flooding. We watched as the ice became thick and smooth. Later, our job would be to keep it clear of snow. We spent hours scraping and sweeping so we could drop the puck on beautiful, gleaming ice. Dad said we had hockey on the brain. Mom said she heard me talking about hockey in my sleep. One morning, there was a surprise at the rink. Mr. Mateau gathered us together. We are going to have a hockey team. It'll be called the Wolves, he said. I'll be your coach, and today I will choose the team. What do you say, boys? We shouted and screamed with glee. This was going to be hockey heaven. Everyone was silent as Mr. Matteau began reading out the names of, sorry, names for the new team. Marcel was first to be called. The rest of us anxiously held our breath as other names were added. Finally, Mr. Matteau put down his clipboard. Anita, Patu, and I couldn't believe it. We were not on the team. Marcel pointed to us and said, they're good players. Mr. Matteau shook his head. Girls don't play hockey. Pateau is too small. And Danny can't skate. When I got home, I told Mom what had happened. You and Pateau and Anita can still have fun playing together, she said. There will always be games of shinny at the rink. This didn't make me feel any better. It's not fair, I said. We're just as good as the rest. And every night was the same. I lay awake staring at the ceiling and talking to myself. My first chance to wear a uniform and play real hockey. And now it's gone. Every day after school, I watched from my window as the boys went to the rink. Bingo kept looking at me and wagging his tail. He couldn't understand why we didn't go out to play. Not making the team was the biggest disappointment of my life. Weeks later, one snowy Saturday, there was a knock at the door. There stood Mr. Matteau, pointing his finger at me and grinning. Danny, he said, we need you to play goal this afternoon. Tony is hurt. The league has given us special permission to let you play on foot. This is a very important game, you know. If we win, we'll be in the playoffs. I was so excited, I let out a whoop and jumped back onto Bingo's tail. What a racket. But even though I was happy, deep down, I was afraid. What if I let the team down? When I got to the rink, 
All the guys patted me on the back and helped me into Tony's sweater. I was proud, but my heart was pounding. Marcel whispered, don't worry, just play your game and you and we'll win. As I took my position in goal, I saw Anita, Pito, and Bingo watching along the boards. You can do it, Danny, they called. The first period was really rough. With end-to-end action, they scored on me and my spirits dropped. But then we scored twice. The period ended at 2-1 to one for the Wolves. I had stopped 10 shots out of 11. I could hardly breathe. Then, in the second period, they attacked us with all their strength. I stopped 12 shots, but finally a shot went in over my pads. I felt sick. We were tied at two all. I'd let the team down. The third period was like a bad dream. The shots came at me from all sides. I stopped them with every part of my body. It seemed impossible that we could win. With only two minutes left to go, or sorry, with only two minutes to go, Marcel rushed up the ice, stick handled through the defense, and slipped the puck under their goalie. At the final whistle, we piled on top of each other in a great heap. We had won the game three to two. Mr. Matteau came onto the ice and put his arms around Marcel and me. You two saved the game for us, he said. Danny, I want you to stay on the team. What do you say? I spotted Anita and Pateau waving in the crowd. Suddenly, I knew what I wanted most of all. I looked at Marcel and he nodded. I pointed to my friends and said, they play the rest of the year with the Wolves too. Mr. Matteau laughed, but he promised. Then he took us all to Chong's Cafe for treats. Our hearts glowed with the joy of victory. It was a night we would remember all our lives. And that, my friends, is the Moccasin Goalie. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, have a great day.